I come from a school where service client satisfaction is of utmost importance. Hello and welcome back, Architect Nation. I'm Enix Sears, and this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for managing and running and building an architectural practice that lets you do your best work more often. Because here at Business of Architecture, our goal for you is that the business of architecture shouldn't get in the way of the architecture. And if you haven't already checked it out, go check out at smartpracticemethod.com. Go get access to our 60-minute firm owner masterclass. We've packed that with all the learnings and research that we've done over the past decade plus about how you can structure your practice for more freedom, fulfillment, and financial reward. And if you haven't already come to work with us in our smart practice program or, or know about our smart practice method, what are you waiting for? There's no, no reason to reinvent the wheel. Come on over here and let's help you build a practice to suit your life. Today, I'm joined by Luis Murillo. Luis, welcome to the Business of Architecture. Thank you, Anik. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, podcast. I'm very excited about you know, sharing our experience uh, in the field of architecture, hoping that we can you know, help others uh, with their uh, small practices. Yeah, and if that's a great place to start, if you were giving advice to yourself, you know, 10 years ago, what would you, what advice would you give about having success and running a practice? Having success, wow. Um, I mean, for us, what has always worked out great is no matter what, perform, do, do your best work. Um, at times, um, it isn't easy to give your 100%, but I find that regardless what the circumstances are, if you give it 100% in communication, coordination, whatever drawing you put together, if you put 100% attention to what you are drafting or 100% attention to what you are telling your clients, it will, it will always work on your favor. You may be spending more time than you normally would on certain tasks, but communication is, is, is paramount. Just uh, uh, just give it that 100% to what you do. Luis, tell me, how did you get your first client? And you started back in 2010, I believe. Is that correct? Correct. And yeah, how did you get, who was how your first client? Get... <laughs> My first client was a referral from the firm that I used to work at. And uh, again, it comes from always performing your best, always give your 100% and keeping doors open regardless. There are things that are tough in the architecture business. You are dealing with lots of people, not just your clients or general contractors. There's consultants, there's city officials, and you have to, you are the architect, you are the hub of everything. Uh, you're, you're collecting information, putting together documents and sending those to someone so that they can for, perform. So if, if you do your best, it will come back to you, uh, it will be rewarding in that, you know, people will always recommend you or we will always go back to you. And that's what happened uh, at my old firm. I was there for about 13 years. I had a phenomenal relationship there. I left the company and they had no issue whatsoever. Uh, first retaining me for a few months to uh, just give me some foundation, I, I, I think, that I, so that I could start uh, my business without having to worry, at least not too much uh, for the financial, on the financial end. So I performed as a consultant there for a little while, and they also referred me to a couple of clients, one in particular for a project that, you know, they, it wasn't, large enough for them to take. It was a complex coordination project, but it was uh, 
good, uh, large enough for me to uh, practice everything that I had learned working with them and, and to show my abilities outside of the work that I was doing for uh, for that firm. So yes, that was my first client. It was a very interesting time to start your own business. I, uh, I have to say uh, it was in the middle of the recession when I turned in my resignation letter. I was told, Luis, you are picking out just about the worst time <laughs> to start your yeah. own practice. Why? Why did you start your own practice, Luis? Why wasn't it? Why not just keep working at the practice you were working at before? Um, there are certain um, administrative or logistics, logistic aspects of the business that increase. Uh, in volume when you're working at a larger firm. All of a sudden, you're spending more time in meetings. You're having to talk to several different people to uh, reach a uh, decision on, on, on things that maybe normally shouldn't take that long. You have to wait for availability for the decision makers to push your project forward. And it was at a time when, you know, uh, 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 money was scarce in in general worldwide, <laughs> yeah. and I and I am a very efficient, uh, task driven guy. And for me, having to spend time in meetings that I didn't think were all that productive, and, uh, or having to wait for decisions, or go over things too many times it was a waste of my time a waste of uh the client's time so it got to a point where i'm like you know i think the uh, the company has taken an approach to the business that is not necessarily in line with what i think it it should be i rather be on a smaller practice and and just be able to focus on quality of work production. So you felt you could do better on your own. I thought I could do better, um, produce, you know, better. What's work. what's been what's been a surprising challenge for you that you you just surprised you? Um, working on your own. I I think that um, the amount of time that I have to spend on uh, administrative portions of the practice increased when I decided to start my own business. I, you know, funny because I thought I was spending too much time dealing with personnel and and administrative things when I was at my old firm. And I thought that doing my own thing would make things better. Well, Mm. not necessarily uh, (laughs) because before I had a whole team of people that was in charge of billing contracts and holding different uh, uh, individuals or projects. Now it was me and only me, and I was a sole practitioner for a little while uh, until I thought, well, I, I need to find the perfect partner that can take care of those portions of that very important part of the practice that allow me to spend a little bit more time on the design and documentation and coordination portion of the of the business. Yeah. And what's been the, what's been the hardest part about being a practice owner for you? Being a, the hardest part um I mean in, on a uh, small practice you have to be a very well-rounded individual. You may be a great designer, but if you are not a good project manager, there's not a lot you can do. <laughs> if you are an excellent project manager, but your design skills are not there, well, you have an issue. When you <laughs> And there are, like that, different, many different aspects of the practice that, in a larger uh, environment, you know, you have 
10 people and amongst the 10 or the five people, you can find the right balance. But if it is only mm. you, well, you know, you have to have it all <laughs> in you. And I don't pretend to be, you know, the all wise, all knowing uh, architect, but I, I think I have a good handle on, on a lot of things that do allow me to produce good work. Okay, good. So that's good. And so what's been the most challenging part for you? The most challenging? Um, the hardest part, yeah. The hardest part? Um, yeah. uh, I think up to a certain point, uh, we touched on that earlier, uh, was trying to find time to promote my business, our business, while at the same time producing quality work. For a while, I was doing all by myself, agreements, billing, uh, everything that is related to the business. And then I was also designing, producing construction documents, coordinating, going to job site meetings. And, and I could do one of the two things very well, but not the two of them. Um, I, I was lacking that partner that was uh, knowledgeable and and willing to take on the administrative part of the business. Mm -hmm. I cannot be fully hands off, but at least I know someone is taking the lead and uh, I can review what needs to be reviewed. I can be consulted and on what I need to be consulted on. Uh, and then I know things are going to happen behind the scenes and I can focus on, on, uh, projects. And what is, what does Marcella dislike most about working in the practice? So Marcella is your life partner as well as a business partner in the business. Yes, she is. She, she runs the business. <laughs> yeah. Someone has to run nice the business so yeah. that I can, yeah. I can, uh, do uh, other things. I don't know that she has. Um, I think. Um, what are her What are her biggest frustrations she has on the business side? Yeah, what are her biggest frustration, frustrations? I mean, um, we have to do a lot of coordination. I said that earlier. We have to deal yeah. with all sorts of people, and um, yeah, be it a client, a general contractor, or a consultant. I have a good handle or I'm used to dealing with all types of characters. Some are mm -hmm. more fun that work with than others. Marcella, sometimes she tells me, I don't know how you get the patience to deal with this person. Mm -hmm. uh, some people yeah. is not very, you know, uh, responsive yeah uh, some people don't do the things that they say they are going to do and uh, you know you go to this to talk to city officials and you get different answers depending on who you talk to so how you navigate through all that uh, is something that I have a good I think I think I have a good handle on all that Marcella she she always like i don't know how you do it you know uh, how can you <laughs> deal with all that and still come home with a you know just leave everything inside the office and go home and and just go about my personal life without any issues <laughs> well that's yeah. definitely tough so you you're based out of it's in the manhattan beach area mm -hmm. and you do a lot of a lot of um, how much how much custom home design do you do versus versus remodel design? Uh, remodels. So we do all uh, custom residential work. Yeah. Either new builds or uh, extensive renovations. Lately, it has been more of a maybe sixty five. 70% um, I'm sorry uh, extensive renovations 
okay. and about 30% new homes. Okay. And we are Which... we do in Manhattan Beach, Hermosa, we do Palos Verdes, uh, Santa Monica. We 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 do go around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you yeah. find yourself competing with other firms very often, or when people come to you, are you the only firm they're looking at? No, all the time. All the time. There's some uh, extraordinary uh, architects in the area. Yeah. And yes, I, I, find, I, I know more or less who we are competing with. Um, but yeah, yeah. And when, when you lose a commission, so we are yeah, the only, yeah. when someone goes with a competitor, what, what's the reason why you usually find that they might go with someone else? Uh, a lot of times is the, um, the uh, cost. Sometimes uh, we can be So because higher. the other architect charges less? Yes, there are other no, architects that charge less for their work. Yeah. And it and it's a it's a tough uh, thing to do because um, and I'm sure everyone thinks the same. I do think we offer uh, a service that does uh, grant that added cost. Um, and again, some other architects may, may, may think the same. Well, we do the same that you do. I don't know that for a fact, but I, I come from a school where uh, service client satisfaction is of utmost importance. So uh, our coordination, communication, uh, the information that we put in our documents is all so very detailed and comprehensive that I find very difficult at times to see how someone can claim to produce the same quote unquote amount of work for at a much lower price. Mm, yeah. How and if you don't mind me asking, how do you set your fees? Do you set it construction cost or hourly or how are you structuring your fees for commercial do, work? I'm sorry, do. residential work. We do to we have a lot of obviously historical data. I've been doing this for about twenty five years in the states, so I have a lot of time cards, uh, and I, I do a lot of, or I did a lot of the drafting and coordination and documentation myself. So I know how long it takes to do things. So when we get a project, depending on how big the project is. I say, okay, how many hours does it take to to do schematic design, design development, construction documents? We add a percentage because we don't know how this client or how this team will, how it will be to work with this team. And then we come up with a total amount of labor that we think is going to take to get the project through. And we multiply that by, by a fee. And we compare that with a, a percentage uh, of construction cost. And we we try to find a balance between the two. Um, yeah, we use, use the two methods. And based on that, we calculate a fee. And we generally propose a fixed fee for the entire project. Okay. Okay. How do you make sure that you keep that fee within the balance so that you actually have a profit. Are you measuring your profit by project? Marcela is. <laughs> okay, good to know. <laughs> That's fine, fair enough. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and yeah we does... talked about it. Uh, uh -huh. We have, uh, because I used to do um, uh, the billing also for the firm I was working for. So I understand about multipliers, what makes sense? What are the the how you can measure whether a project is being profitable or not? I have passed that on to Marcella. Plus, there's a lot of seminars and things that she that she goes to that have have helped reinforce all that. I am a little out of the loop since she took over fully that department. <laughs> three, four years ago, but uh, we have some metrics 
that uh, to know what is proper. And she keeps me on balance. We do time cards for everything, regardless of whether the project is hourly, because we do have projects that are on an hourly basis. Uh, yeah. or, or fixed fee, we have time cards, and she goes, okay, guys, you're spending already, you know, you're supposed to spend this much time during this phase, what's going on? So she, she tries to keep keep us in line on that end. Okay, so if we look at the roles in the practice, you know, we might talk about the finder, the minder, and the grinder. So the minder minds the money, the finder finds the jobs, and the grinder does the jobs. Are you Are you the finder and the grinder? Uh, that sounds that sounds, about, sounds right. about right. Yes. And do you do so in terms of getting projects? I notice you have some great. It looks like you focus on more modern, you know, typical man. I mean, beautiful Manhattan style Manhattan Manhattan Beach <laughs> residences. Um, we don't how, go. Do you do for... active marketing, or how do you get your clients? Or is it referrals from contractors? What do you find your best source for getting work? <sighs> Mostly is referrals from previous clients, previous clients, and yeah. general contractors. So yeah. Okay. There are some that are uh, have come through us via interior designers. We have a uh, we work with several different great interior designers, and sometimes some of the projects come through them. Okay. Okay. Good. Are you doing any active marketing right now? Or is it just referrals? I mean, right now it's so busy. Who would want to, right? You're probably over. Are you guys overloaded with work, or do you do any advertising or anything like that? We don't do any advertising outside our job site signs. Yeah. Outside yeah. the social media, um, I personally don't yeah. spend a lot of time on social media, but um, okay. we do okay. have a. Uh, public relations a marketing consultant that coordinates also with marcella everything that has to do with uh me uh, social media exposure we are given at the beginning of the month uh the the topics or all the material that is supposed to be posted on a given uh week or a given month and we review everything carefully and uh, approve it, and they take care of all that. So that's more, that's more or less all the marketing that we do. I do attend events on our PR uh, advice. You know, there's this event in you know so and so showroom. It's good. There's going to be great furniture or great people to 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 exchange ideas. Then I do attend those. But not mark, not advertising, like in any kind of publication or anything. No, we don't, we don't do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what would you say is the biggest challenge that you're having right now as a practice? Is it finding uh, team members? Is it managing the projects? Is it the slow approvals process? What would you think is your your biggest challenge right now? Wow, you just, you just mentioned two of the biggest challenges. One is going through city approvals. Yeah. And two is finding the right team members. Yeah, that's it. Those are that's two it. of the biggest ones. Um, yeah. Uh, cities are, some cities are short staff. Uh, I think mainly that's one of the, you know, and it all derived from COVID. I, I don't know exactly uh, uh, why after COVID kind of is not as 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 uh, tough as it was a year or two years ago. But even now that everything is back open, still, and maybe there's a huge backlog of things that got delayed for those two years during COVID, and that's why. But it just is taking easily three times as long <laughs> to, mm. to to get something uh, processed through the city. I used yeah. to be able to say, hey, we have six weeks for the first round of corrections, then three weeks for the second round, and then two or three for the final, and we're golden. Now I can't even 
you know, I can guess, but it's, it's not. The cities, mm. some city they, they, they set, you, you log in online, you submit online, and the program just automatically says, okay, your project is due in six weeks. And then six weeks go by, and oh, no, that's what the program just said, but we are oh, not yeah. there yet. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that's one of the biggest challenges. And the second one is uh, is finding the right uh, talent, the right yeah. individual to, to, to work with. Um, this business, in my mind at least, is uh, mostly about planning, and coordinating. If you do a good job during schematic design, design development, both listening to your clients and uh, coordinating with all the consultants that are involved in the project, it should be a fairly easy exercise to put together the construction documents and go through uh, construction administration. And having that person that has the um, uh, ability or the persistence to, you know, hey, you you know, the elevator guy hasn't called you, didn't call you this morning. Well, you call him again. And tomorrow, yeah. first thing, you call again and you send another email and, and so forth until you get a response. Not Some yeah. people just send the email. Oh, yeah, I sent the email last week, but I haven't heard yeah, back. Yeah, I haven't heard back that from him. It doesn't. It doesn't work. It does. You have to. You have to be persistent. You have to put in the time to follow up. Yeah, yeah. And what are, What are the impacts that you're seeing in the practice of those two challenges? Well, longer schedules, obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, for for on the as far as um, not finding the right team member has put a lot of pressure on myself uh, when it comes to uh, quality control to uh, construction documents, completion, uh, because I need to be doing a lot of that, not finding the right uh, project manager with the uh, technical expertise to review or produce uh, quality details just puts that pressure on me to <laughs> to review and come up with all those details. So that is that is uh, that is the biggest mm. um, uh, effect in the profession. And and because I am spending so much time on construction and by the way i love everything that has to do with technical development of of projects uh structural coordination mechanical systems coordination is yeah. just an over there's a lot of it that i have to do i love doing it will it help me if i had uh you know i do have uh, two, uh one person that helps me with that i wish i had i had more <laughs> But yeah. that's one big, big, big challenge that has affected the profession. And second, the scheduling of projects when it comes to uh, uh, your clients, some of them are flexible. Some of them don't have a, a definitive uh, 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 deadline. Uh, but some of them, I would say 60% or 70% of your clients, they do want to move in this day or they do yeah. want to have a permit in hand by this date and uh, we do as much as we can on our end either when it comes to submitting when it comes to uh, resubmitting we do as fast as we can but there's only so much we can do when it comes to dealing with uh, a cities uh, it helps that we have an, a tremendous tremendously good relationship with some of the cities that we work in. We've been working in Hermosa, Manhattan Beach um, for for many, many years and that having that good relationship and my 
policy of always keep the doors open, it pays. Because you do get responses a little bit faster than than others, <laughs> I feel. Mm-hmm. Okay, so where where from here, Luis? Where are you looking to take the practice? Maintain where you're at, or what, what's the plan for the future here? I love working in um, uh, custom residential uh, projects. I uh, enjoy just seeing. Uh, how our practice improves our clients' uh, yeah. lives. Um, I, I just, I really, really enjoy doing it. And I don't see myself doing uh, like a lot of commercial work. I used to do restaurant work mm. at the okay. firm I was working at. Um, uh, I mean, I love the design aspect of it. and. And, and all the coordination that goes with it. But um, I don't know, there's a, a, a homeowner is much more vested, I feel, on how their home is going to, to look or perform. Obviously, a restaurateur also cares how his restaurant is going to, to look like when it's finished, but he's all like, I want it. Now I want it to be beautiful, and I want it to be cheap. So it's yeah, they're just to... more, much more about the bottom line, right? <laughs> Speak, <laughs> speaking, speaking, Luis, on that, just to finish up here. But speaking of the bottom line, um, what, 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 what's your profit margin? If you don't mind me asking, that you guys shoot for in the practice? Do you track right, that? You define profit margin. Yeah, after all expenses. So your net, your net income after expenses minus, let's say, take your salary out, but like, kind of what's left? What percentage you shooting for? Like twelve percent, twenty percent, or maybe that you don't track it. Do you know? I don't track it that way, but I we have a a multiplier of two point five about. Oh, you're meaning two point five. Okay. That's that. I don't know how that translates into a percentage. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, yeah. If we can do 2.2, 2.5 on a project uh, that covers the all the expenses, you know, overhead, all that, and and that that gives a good prop, uh, margin. Got it. Got it. Okay. Well, thanks, Luis, for being here on the business of architecture today. All right. Well, this was a very, uh, you know, I really like. I don't talk about what we do too often, to be honest with you. <laughs> and it is uh, so. it is awesome to just, you know, being able to, to share your experiences. And uh, I can't wait to actually listen to some of your other interviews. And now I, am a, I feel a lot more interesting on hearing what everyone else <laughs> uh, has to say about this. But um, yeah. no, this was awesome. Thank you Check so much for your time. And uh, yeah, very good. You're welcome. And that's a wrap. If you enjoyed today's show, please head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. I read every single one. Also, I'd love to get your feedback on this particular episode or the show in general, as well as your recommendations. You can reach us by emailing podcast at businessofarchitecture.com. This podcast is brought to you by Business of Architecture, a leading architect business consultancy. Access our free training on how to structure your architecture firm for more freedom, fulfillment, and financial success by going to smartpracticemethod.com. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation promise, guarantee, warranty, pledge, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.